Hi guys, my name's Chloe, I'm otherwise known as Lady Rights, and today I'm going to be talking to you for AttractionTickets.com, formerly known as AttractionTicketsDirect.com, about the way that the SeaWorld parks in Florida are especially autism friendly. My son has autism and he is age 9, he is especially prone to struggling in oversensitive environments, so we were really really keen on our recent trip to Florida to be able to visit all of the SeaWorld parks because they are officially certified as autism centres in America. They are the only theme parks with that status which means that all of their staff have been trained to deal with um, autistic guests, they have specific areas for downtime and uh, so many different features of their parks have been specifically designed with autism in mind which as an autism mum is absolutely fantastic and so incredibly rare. So let me show you what we got up to on our recent trip and then at the end of the video I'm going to just chat through some of my very basic and top tips for travelling to the SeaWorld parks if you or any member of your family has autism. There's just a few things that we picked up that we thought would be really useful for you guys if you are in the same position. is our trip rounded up. As you can see we've had a pretty spectacular time. We visited Discovery Cove, Aquatica, SeaWorld, Bush Gardens. We have done so many parks since we've been here and we've had the best time. I think we need a holiday to recover from this holiday. It's been so much fun. We've had the best time. Um, while we were there we definitely noticed some key things. Um, we have also been to some other parks while we've been here and there were some real key differences um, and things that really impressed us about the SeaWorld parks with regards to how they work for people on the autistic spectrum. The first tip that I have for you is to pre-plan and forward book your tickets as far as you can in advance so that you know that you're taken care of. We booked obviously with AttractionTickets.com who used to be Attraction Tickets Direct and this meant that we were completely covered, we knew that we were going, I could kind of take the weight off, I could plan our days ahead of us, plan an itinerary and also get the best deal because if you rock up at the parks on the day you're going to pay a much higher price. So pre-booking with these guys is a great way of saving some money. Now. Also what that allows you to do is forward plan with the autistic member of your family in mind because as anybody knows, autism and forward planning, routine, things like that, you need to really, really over plan. So we found that one of our biggest tips was ahead of the trip to make an itinerary at home that we had out for all of the members of the family to see. We knew exactly what day we were going to what park, what kind of thing that they could expect and we kept reinforcing that while we were at home. So that's just something that you can do prior to your visit 
plan ahead, book the tickets, decide on the day that you're going. Um, and when you do book your tickets in advance, you can have a 14 day pass like we did, which means you can go back as many times as you want. So you do have that flexibility option as well. Um, for us, we liked to forward plan and know which days we were doing things. So it was really good just to know that we bought the tickets, knew that we could go back if we wanted to, but have the first week completely planned with exactly where we were going. The next tip I have for you would be to visit guest services as soon as you enter the park. It's usually very, very close to the front entrance and it's where you kind of, it's what we'd call in the UK like customer services, but it's guest relations. If you go there, you can register for the Ride Accessibility Programme, which is designed specifically for people with disabilities and autism in mind. Now, as we all know, people with autism and, and, and on any of the spectrums really, will struggle with being in busy, crowded places. It's very difficult for their sensory processing side of things. It can often be quite dark because the rides are themed and it's just a little bit stressful. So the Ride Accessibility Programme basically means you visit the ride, you go up to the person manning the attraction, they give you a return time, often half an hour to an hour later and you can come back and get straight on the ride so effectively you still have to wait your queue time but you don't have to queue in the actual queue. This means that you can go and get some food or drink or just walk around and just enjoy other things but that is a very big tip and it's also very important to take away some of the stress of visiting a busy theme park if you have anybody in your party on the autism spectrum. The next tip that I've had for you would be to make sure that you take full advantage of the SeaWorld parks and the way that they often have designated centres and calm places which are separate buildings, separate rooms with dim lighting, there's some sensory processing stuff on the walls, um, some of the ones that we saw had lots of beading on the wall to kind of de-stress, the lighting is very low, it's a low mood environment so that you can kind of go in, refresh Fresh, revive, take yourself away from the busyness and the heat of being outdoors in a the theme park and it just gives you time to refresh and as a family we found that really really useful. Um, it just really does give you five or ten minutes to press that off button and completely start afresh for the next couple of hours in the park. Another tip that I'd have for you if you have any um, special experiences or you're doing any extras while you're in the parks make sure that you tell the person in charge of that that a member of your party has autism. As I said at the beginning of the video everybody in the SeaWorld parks has been trained to deal with guests with autism which sounds quite horrible but it's actually amazing because where else in the world can you find that every member of staff is fully trained to cope with deal and a associate with autism guests especially. It's just something I've never heard of before. We had a penguin encounter at SeaWorld itself and we obviously mentioned to the, the staff that that was our situation and they were incredibly attentive to our needs as a family and likewise at Discovery Cove when we swam with dolphins and we had a few more issues there with confidence and overstimulation and things like that and as a result our dolphin trainers were amazingly, amazingly attentive to our needs. It was just the best thing to do is a quiet word. Other simple tips would just be the basics. Make sure that you always carry a lot of water because it gets so hot here and that can kind of exasperate the whole situation, make symptoms of autism a lot higher when dehydration kicks in and stuff like that. So we always carried an absolute ton of water with us. Always pick up the park maps so you know exactly where you're going. And if you are a pre-planner like I am, plan your route, know exactly which attractions you're going to and when. Um, making a really thorough itinerary is actually something that massively helps us. It saved us so much time in queuing and zigzagging through the parks and we knew where we were going to eat and what time we were going to eat and things like that and it just helped exasperate any tension or stress that Josh may have had. So overall it was a really good opportunity. So yeah, pick up lots of water, pick up a map and pre-plan your journey through the park. So guys, there you have it. Those are my top tips if you are visiting the SeaWorld parks and a member of your family is on the autism spectrum and you want to make the most of their visit. Overall, the best thing is just to enjoy it, make the most of it. For us, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and we absolutely loved it. We were so, so grateful for SeaWorld being so attentive to our needs and I'm so grateful as a mum that there are parks like this where you can take your child if they're on the autistic spectrum and they can just enjoy it like everybody else. They're not treated any differently. There's no um, special needs label or anything like that. It's just kind of classed as the norm and I absolutely love that. It was just so relaxing and refreshing to experience as a family and for that reason we'd absolutely go back. It's something I cannot recommend highly enough to families who have special needs members in their unit. 
Thanks so much for watching today's video guys. I hope that you found it useful and enjoyed seeing what we got up to on our holiday. If you do want to see a little bit more, please do head over to my own YouTube channel where you can see a little bit more detail about our holiday. For me, I just want to say thank you so much to AttractionTickets.com for giving us this amazing opportunity to go and experience all of these wonderful parks. We had the best time as a family and we're hoping to plan our next visit very soon. Thanks so much. Bye.